what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at it again with another video man just finished watching wwe backlash i'm not gonna call it what they've been calling it the wrestlemania backlash i'm not doing that it's wwe backlash now funny thing is i did not know that the pay-per-view was starting so early usually it starts at 7 p.m central standard time um but today it started at 6 p.m central standard time or maybe i'm tripping i'm not sure but uh shout out to everyone that was on my ig live letting me know that the pay-per-view had started because i didn't know so i would have been kind of an hour behind but i was able to catch the entrances of uh charlotte flair um oscar and uh bianca uh, not bianca um rhea ripley for the women's championship match that was the match that started off the pay-per-view and uh got my notes took as much notes as i possibly could for matches that i cared about there's some uh matches that i didn't really take too many notes we're gonna talk about that on why i didn't take certain uh didn't take really any notes for some of these matches but uh appreciate all the love and support let's get right into it because i know you guys want my thoughts and opinions on on uh, everything that went down on backlash so triple third match for the raw women's championship i put this in the notes at the beginning i hope rhea ripley retains because i feel like if you're gonna build up this new champion from nxc she needs to retain the title um they start to double team charlotte obviously charlotte coming back basically saying i missed wrestlemania i should have been there and now i'm gonna retain you know regain um the raw women's championship so they start double teaming her uh charlotte can't knock rhea ripley down with her shoulder blocks rhea ripley showing her you know her strength and her dominance um the backbreaker to rhea then thrown face first into the second turnbuckle i thought that was a, a pretty cool pretty cool spot you know what i'm saying um then the that was uh it was a stiff very very stiff kick that Rhea hit Oscar with when they showed the the slow mo replay it like you can see when the kick lands it hits Oscar's neck and causes her head to kind of move and she was kind of reeling back for a little bit the ref went to check on her because that that kick looked brutal then Oscar kicking Charlotte and Rhea back and forth, kind of like how Daniel Bryan does the yes kicks if he's like in a triple threat match against two other opponents. They're both on their knees. That's basically what Oscar was doing. Nice little segment there. The moonsault to Oscar and Rhea, uh, the moonsault to Oscar and Rhea by Charlotte was beautiful. She executed it beautifully. It it looked dope and slow mo. Just her hitting, like her form was, you know, it, it looked really good. So I thought that was a nice little spot. Then Rhea hits the Riptide to Asuka to retain her championship. Basically, Os um, Charlotte kind of screwed herself over in a sense because she ended up, I, I want to say, kicking uh, Asuka through the ropes, but she ends up falling out of the ring. Charlotte ends up falling out of the ring, which gave Rhea the opportunity to hit Asuka with the Riptide for the 1-2-3 win. Rhea Ripley retains her championship. She's mocking Charlotte, and Charlotte's giving her this mean look, and I feel like that's going to be the next match because Charlotte can say, you didn't pin me. You pinned Asuka, but you never, you've never, you never beaten me. You know what I'm saying? I, and I, I think if Charlotte goes that route, you know, trying to bring up past situations, like, yeah, you couldn't beat me. I took your NXT championship. You remember that? I think that would be nice. So I think that's going to be the next feud. I'm actually looking forward to that. And hopefully Rhea Ripley can come on, come off on top because I think Rhea Ripley, you know what I'm saying, if they really book her correctly, she could be a very dominant force for the women's division. Charlotte's had her time. She doesn't need to win any more championships. I'm, I'm just keeping it honest with you. Not anytime soon, but I think that will be the upcoming women's championship match in the future. I think probably for Hell in a Cell, but we will see. Um, Dolph Ziggler versus Ray and Dominic for the SmackDown Tag Titles. Um... Before the match began, Dominic got attacked by Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode. They were, you know, basically setting it up as Ray pretty much going to go out there on a 1v2 situation and try to overcome the odds. Uh, Ray is um, Ray was definitely holding his own at the beginning of the match. He was attacking both of them. Like, you, you know, you start to really buy in that maybe Ray could do this because he was 
you know what I'm saying? He would gain he was he had a lot of momentum at the beginning of the match, just taking him out as much as he could by himself. Um Ray's legs end up getting caught up on the top turnbuckle, so they start really just tag teaming him at that point. Um Ray kicking out of the famouser was a nice little nice little exchange. Then Ray being thrown out the ring like like you know, I guess you could say like a baseball slide. Like Bobby Roode threw him like a baseball slide. As he's falling out the ring or whatnot, he ends up getting kicked in the face by Dolph Ziggler that's by the announce table. Nice, brutal, brutal spot. Like you it, it the timing on that was perfect. Um Ray, I put in my notes, Ray's putting up a fight at this point. He's still fighting by himself. Uh then Dominic comes to the ring selling the rib injury. Um, Ray hit a bulldog to Bobby Roode from the top rope. That was that was very nice. Um, at this point, I'm, I'm enjoying the match even more. I think I'm liking the match because of the storytelling. I like good storytelling in tag team matches. Basically, Ray doesn't want Dominic out there. Dominic's out there because he's trying to show that, you know what I'm saying, you know, he wants to be there in his, you know, his dad's corner. He wants to help. He wants to gain the championship. So I like the storytelling they were telling there. Um, and I wasn't expecting this. I kind of should have seen this the way they set it up. But they won the match um, with uh, Dominic coming off the top rope for a, a frog splash to Bobby Roode. And they end up gaining the tag team championships. And they become the first father-son duo to win tag team championships and i think that was very great i would have loved that moment to have been in front of a live crowd i think that moment in front of a live crowd would have been fantastic so um but it was cool to see that and it'll be interesting to see where they go in the future <clears throat> then there's a little backstage segment jimmy goes into roman's locker room and he's basically trying to talk sense into jay like what are you doing bro like you know what I'm saying why are you following Roman like a lap dog you know what I'm saying we should be going after the tag team titles but instead you in here you know what I'm saying waiting on Roman and working for Roman hey what are you doing bro get it together dog so that was a nice little exchange there now here's the thing this is the part where I stopped taking notes for the most part because I thought this was cringe earlier in the night the Miz uh the Miz and I want to say uh, uh, Morrison were talking about their upcoming um, Lumberjack match with Damian Priest. And Morrison's like, yeah, I'm going to talk to the guys in the locker room, see if we can sort some things out. So it'll be in the best interest for you, Miz. I, I got you, bro, right? He's going to the supposed locker room, locker room where all the superstars are at, all the wrestlers are at. He opens the door, and he sees a whole bunch of zombies. Now, on this part, I started really cringing hard. Because I'm like, bro, what the hell is this? I get it. They're promoting the movie that Dave Bautista's in. Um, what is that? What's the name of the movie? Let me, let me, let me go find this right now uh, so I can be correct here army of the dead dave patisse is starring in a movie called army of the dead so they're doing a promotion you know that's one of the sponsors for tonight i get that that's cool and all i think you can just keep mentioning it or whatever that's fine maybe show some clips during between the matches that's fine but having zombies in the back now roaming around no and i i put this in my notes specifically if they are part of this lumberjack match I'm not watching it. Miz versus Damian Priest lumber match, lumberjack match begins, and then the zombies start walking out. The fog is all of a sudden start coming by ringside. The announcers get out because they they don't want to be around the zombies. And I instantly said, I'm not watching this match. I don't give a damn. I'm sure Damian Priest will win. Spoiler alert: He did win, but I didn't give a damn, bro. I I'm telling you, I did not watch this match, bro. Like, it was so lame to me, bro. And ultimately, Damian Priest wins. And as Miz is laying in the middle of the ring, it's implied that the zombies got in the ring and started eating him. And on the outside, John Morrison got eaten up too. (sighs) 
That shit was lame, bro. If you like that, more power to you. I did not like that. That was lame. That wasn't cool. That wasn't interesting. Why is this on my wrestling show? Like, it's just guys in zombie makeup, bro. And now Miz has been eaten alive. Whatever, bro. Moving on. <clears throat> Jimmy's saying... Uh, there's another backstage segment where Jimmy is basically talking to Jay. And he was like, you know what? That locker room shouldn't say Roman Reigns. That locker room should say Roman Reigns and his bitch, which is Jay Uso. I, I like that. I like how Jimmy is really just trying to get Jay to understand, like, bro, at the end of the day, keep it a stack with you. You're really Roman's bitch, but that's neither here nor there. So. Next matchup, Bianca uh, versus Bayley for the SmackDown's Women's Championship. Um, I didn't really take too much notes on this match. One, I was starting, I fixed me some food. And then two, it was an okay match for me. I just, I wasn't really as invested as I should have been or I wanted to be. It was a decent match. Um, I had to make this uh, very clear and I wanted to talk about this. Bianca Belair, Belair is very athletic. She's you can see her athleticism throughout the match. Uh Bailey dropping Bianca stomach first on the steel steps was nice. Bianca kicks out of the Bailey the belly. Thought that was a nice little nice little kick out spot. Bianca used her hair to pin Bailey towards the end of the match for her to win. Basically, um I want to say Bailey was trying to use the hair and she ultimately ended up using the hair towards the end of the match and she was going to use it for her advantage. But <clears throat> Bianca was able to overturn that and use her hair to use it as leverage to tie around uh, Bailey's leg to get the pin. The ref didn't see it. So Bailey's match is going to announce table telling Michael Cole to run the replay, show the replay. Uh, Bianca cheated. And then she tries to get the ref over there. Yo, ref, Bianca cheated. She used her hair. And then the ref said, well, you was cheating too. So I thought that was funny, bro. I thought that was a nice little segment. Like, uh, Bailey was, you know, using some heel cheap tactics, raking them the eye and stuff like that. So, But Bianca retains the championship, which I expected. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to continue the feud. We will see. Um, but I don't know who's next up for the Women's SmackDown Championship. I don't know who would be an, uh, another contender. So we will see what happens on that end. <clears throat> the triple threat match between Bobby Lashley, um, Drew McIntyre, and Braun Strowman for the WWE Championship. This match I knew was going to be uh, uh, hard-hitting, and it definitely was. Um I said at the beginning, before the match even started, I do think Bobby Lashley will retain him. I think he's going to lose the, the title right now. Um, Drew working with Bobby to attack Braun Strowman at the beginning. It was a it was a nice sight to see. They didn't want to work with each other, but they decided to. Um, at this point, uh, the homies, uh, Dub and Brandon, they called me. So I was on the on FaceTime with them. We was talking about some in the clutch business related stuff. But I was still watching the match, you know what I'm saying? And from what I was definitely seeing, even though I wasn't taking as many notes, I was definitely enjoying the spots and just the brutal nature of it, which I expected it to be. Um Braun using the steel steps to destroy Bobby Lashley was nice. Also previous to that that very spot, Bobby Lashley just kinda slinging drew into the steel post was nice um drew pretty much throwing bobby lashley through the led board set like there's like a little section on the side by the ramp area he just throws him throws bobby lashley through it sparks go everywhere you don't see bobby lashley until the end of the match obviously you, you kind of know if you've been watching wrestling for a while he's gonna get involved he wasn't out the match completely um then braun tackles um, on Drew McIntyre down the ramp all the way to the ring apron, and then Braun destroys Drew through an announce table. That was a nice little spot. Nice. It, it, this match was just hard hitting, which I expected. Three tall, strong men going at each other. You can tell this was going to be like a, a just destruction everywhere. Um, then Drew hits the claymore on Braun. Then out of nowhere. Uh, Bobby Lashley throws 
drew out the ring and then hits Braun with a spear for the one, two, three victory. And Bobby Lashley, out of nowhere, retains his WWE championship, which I think was the right booking decision. Now, the question is, where do they go from here? I don't think Drew needs another rematch. I don't think Braun needs another rematch. There needs to be somebody else to come up, to step up to the plate, to try to take Drew's championship. The question is, who? Because I don't know, because I don't watch Raw, because Raw is boring. So comment down below, let me know who y'all think should be next to take Drew's championship match. And uh, Drew's championship title. So, the best match of the night, which, come on, if you didn't think this was going to be the best match of the night, I don't know what to tell you. Roman versus Cesaro. I said this on my uh, uh, reaction to uh, Jimmy and Jay and Roman on SmackDown in my video. I said this, that when it comes to Roman Reigns, since he's been back, he has put on nothing but fantastic matches with everyone he's been in a feud with, from Jay Uso all the way down now to Cesaro, bro. Fantastic match. I love this match. This match made Cesaro look like a million bucks, bro. A million bucks. They made Cesaro look great in this match. Roman didn't want Jay to come out to the ring. He was like, nah, I got this. You go find your brother. He didn't want him to come out to the ring. I like that. They start locking each other up in the ring. Cesaro showing off his strength against Roman. They start lock. Uh, I already said that. I'm tripping. Um, Cesaro showing his wrestling ability, causing Roman to step out the ring to get a little breather. Like, okay, this guy's showing his worth. That springboard uppercut to Roman, very beautiful. Love that spot. Um, they were hard hitting stiff elbows and punches. I was I was liking that. Well, like just stiff moves when it comes to them hitting each other. I was enjoying that. I like how Cesaro mushed Roman's face, like, get out of my way. You know, after a pin attempt, he just mushed his face and Roman got pissed off by it. The pop up pop up uppercut to Roman was nice. Cesaro's corkscrew off the top rope was hella beautiful to Roman on the outside. Now Roman is starting to focus on Cesaro's arm. Uh, Cesaro was locked up on the top rope and his arm was all contorted by Roman. So now the remaining of the match, remainder of the match is Cesaro's right arm being attacked and brutalized. Um, now, um, let's see. Dirk, at this point, Roman's happy about this. Roman, he's smiling. He's like, oh, I, I got this now. It's over for you, bro. I'm, I I know what you're in pain with. I'm about to take advantage of that. Roman starts to bend Cesaro's arm. He starts u applying arm submissions. I like how Roman, Matt, his, his moveset changes depending on the opponent. He starts, he'll focus on certain stuff if he has to. And I, I love that, bro. Roman starts talking his shit. Roman starts uh, kneeing Cesaro in the corner, brutal knees. Roman starts trash talking even more. Uh, Cesaro using a clothesline on Roman with the bad arm. And obviously, he's selling that bad arm. So, he instantly just drops down in pain. Um, I put in my notes at this point, this match is really good. The suplex to Roman while he's on the ring apron. While Cesaro is on the second rope inside the ring. Shows the true testament of Cesaro's strength. I think we all know, pound for pound, Cesaro is one of the strongest people in WWE. Cesaro couldn't go for the neutralizer because of the bad arm. Cesaro kicks out of the Superman punch. Once again, I had to put amazing match because I thought it was over at that point. I ain't going to lie to you. Like The way they were setting up the false finishes was well placed. Uh, Cesaro going for the sharpshooter on Roman. He's apl He applied it. Roman was able to get out. I put Again, in the notes, this match is ridiculously good. Cesaro blocking Roman um, with his forearm punch. You know how Roman likes to go for the ground and pound. Cesaro is blocking it, overpowering it, even with the bad arm. Cesaro powering out of the guillotine. He did it twice. Like, he was able to power slam him and power out of the guillotine, which is very impressive. Uh, but ultimately... Roman was able to cinch in the guillotine even tighter 
and Cesaro passes out. He didn't tap. He passes out. Jay comes out. Um, basically, I'm not sure what it's called. Um, but you know, he is like these, these like these tribal flowers he gives to Roman or whatnot. And then he's like, "Yo, let me get him," because Cesaro's still in the ring. So Jay ends up attacking uh Cesaro after the match. He He's going to the top rope to hit the splash. Then all of a sudden, Chef Rollin comes out there in this ridiculously looking suit. Comes out there, stands in front of Roman, starts laughing, and then starts to attack the hell out of Cesaro. Start hitting him with steel chairs. He's going for Cesaro's bad arm. He puts his arm through the seat of the chair, closes it, then slams it. Cesaro's arm while his arm is in the steel chair wrapped around, slams it against the steel post. Now, Cesaro's rising in pain to add insult to injury. Seth hits the stomp to Cesaro on the outside. And uh, Seth is in the middle of the ring, you know, being a mega heel. And that's how the show ends. And I'm not going to lie to you. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, I do think this is setting up possibly another match between Seth and Cesaro. Um... Because Seth came out there, nah, bro, we ain't done. So, I think this is setting up another match between Seth and Cesaro. I think Cesaro may be one and done. It sucks. But I think the feud between uh, Cesaro and Roman is one and done. He put on a fantastic match. Roman just, he did his thing, man. He won clean. This is not the first time Roman has won without no help. This is what makes this so great. He won clean he did not have to use jay or jimmy's help he did it by himself and that's what makes a champion a heel champion even that much more like harder to beat they can beat you with no help they don't need anyone's help you know what i'm saying roman doesn't need anyone's help you know what i'm saying to beat you that's what makes him in my opinion, a better heel than most because I get tired of heels always using something to help them win. It's cool at some times, but it's also, it makes it seem like, damn, you really can't win without help. But it makes it even better when it's like, well, actually he can because he's won several matches, several championship matches where he didn't need no interference to get the job done. And I think that was beautiful to see Roman Reigns Still the best thing right now. The best match. He always have the best matches now. And uh, Roman Reigns is uh, still your universal champion. And I don't know who feuds with him next. I have no idea who they will have feud with him next. But I think they're going to start going with the Jimmy storyline. I think that's more intriguing. So I, I, I feel like Cesaro and Seth is about to have their feud restarted again. Uh, it may be at Helen. They may have a Hell in a Cell match. Uh, I'm not sure yet, but we will see how that plays out. But I do think at this point they're going to start focusing on the family situation between Jimmy, Jay, and Roman. And I'm not sure how that's going to play out, but I'm interested to see. I'm interested to see where this goes. So comment down below. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this pay-per-view. What was your favorite match from WWE Backlash? Obviously, for me, is Roman versus Cesaro. Love that match. Fantastic match for me personally. So, comment down below. Let me know. I appreciate all your love and support. Road to 40K. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.